Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Mask of the Rose where we have now entered the season of Yule and things have become somewhat complicated uh, due to the fact that Archie is in jail for a murder that has unoccurred, has disoccurred. I mean, the murder still happened. And critical, I suppose, to the plot is that the murder did still happen. It's just that David is no longer murdered. I, are you still murdered if you... Uh, all right, digging into the semantics of this is not important. Uh, we have to figure out exactly what we're going to do about all this. So, there is still uh, the the plan of getting in with the devils, trying to help them, or trying to get them to help us find someone who can just sort of step through the system. Uh, also, I suppose we could try to just prove that Archie is innocent. My concern is that um, <laughs> he might not be. And frankly, I don't care. Like, I especially don't care now that David's alive again. At this point, at this point, Archie being in jail for prison, I suppose, for, for a murder that has... For a murder that has no... Getting hung up on semantics again. I was going to say that no longer has a victim. I suppose it is still the case that killing someone is pretty heinous. Not in, like, a an abstract, objective kind of way but in a, that was probably really like painful and unpleasant for the person kind of way. Like an assault isn't a harmless crime just because the assaulted person survives, right? So maybe I do care if he did it. Hmm. <laughs> maybe I've talked myself around on this. We got to figure out what happened. Before my, my primary concern was let's get Archie free. My primary concern is maybe shifted to let's figure out what exactly what it is that happened. We should probably go talk to David, yeah? Let's do that. So it is the afternoon. We have not yet had a, um, our morning was very busy. I have a lot of pictures on my desk. I can't interact with any of this stuff. If I, <gasps> if I click here, it's just going to head us outside. Do we have any other memories to, to pick through? I don't believe so. Uh, what it was like before February when we lived in the day of night. While well, Grizz kept her distance from the other lodgers and wore gowns. When there was enough food on the table and it wasn't always the same. Sometimes I can't get my memory to go back further than the night of the fall. Okay, so each season it seems like maybe we're going to get a different set of memories available. Um... Before the fall, Horatia and Grizz were less comfortable together. Yeah, I don't feel like I like I don't feel like we the player know very much about Grizz prior to the fall. All we know is that she's different now. What a remarkable painting, Mrs. Chapman. Well, you're kind to say so. They were stiff with each other back in those days. Grizz always talked as though she wished she were somewhere else, and she didn't have trousers yet. Yeah, she does. She almost looks like weird, right? She looks out of context in that dress. Uh, the lion's expression is very amiable. Uh, oh, is this is this a painting of a lion laying down with a lamb or a calf or something? Is this a Christian painting? Um, I, we didn't get along with Horatia so tightly before either. Maybe like the story of the house is is the story of a place that where everybody used to be pretty divided from each other and we've only come together in the aftermath. So I think well, I wouldn't say amiable, maybe drugged. Do you think opium prevents lions from biting? It is not opium. It is divine grace. The painting depicts the peaceable kingdom. The lion shall lie down with a lamb, and a little child shall lead them. Ah, scripture. It's, hmm, not Leviticus. That's the book with all the putting to death. Isaiah. The painting was a gift to my father from Quaker friends. Yeah, I mean, she's wearing the cross around her neck, right? Uh, okay. We also... We also can try to put together a an idea of what it is that happened. 
with the whole David thing. Uh, and make theories with unknowns to question witnesses, then build a final case. Okay, so we have to have, we have to like be pursuing an idea. I actually really like this as a way, I've never seen something like this in a detective game before, but it is kind of similar to the way that you would approach something like this in real life, right? You sort of like get a hunch or you, you form a theory and then you try to track that down, you pursue that. Yeah, this game has such, like, there's a lot of really, really interesting design in this. And I knew there would be. It's fail better. This is, like, part of what I signed up for. So, an unknown, for some reason, committed the murder. An individual of undetermined identity acted as an accomplice or a hidden hand behind the event. So, culprit. I mean, I have no idea. Someone. Well, yeah, we'll just leave it as someone for now. Method. Arsenical cloth. Interesting idea. I wonder if this is available because of our background, because this is a thing that we know works because we were a tailor. I'm going to leave it at unknown methods for now. And who is ultimately behind it? Well, I want it to have been David, if I'm honest, <laughs> because I think that's the most fun version of the story. David, for some reason, motivated someone to commit a temporary murder on him. A nameless individual committed the murder. <laughs> David did pro offer some provocation to the murderer. This is not exactly what I meant. I meant like David was the mastermind behind the whole thing. But this is like, yeah, well, you know, David had it coming. <laughs> Whatever. This will this will work as a theory to ask David about at least. So the motive, why would they want to do it? Wanted to save patients doesn't really make sense. Missed family doesn't really make sense. Hoped for wealth. Maybe it's the theory is that it's a robbery or something. The problem is we just don't know anything about David's life, right? Aside from um, Rachel. It could have been Rachel was just tired of dealing with him. I don't. That wasn't the vibe I was picking up between them, but I mean, I feel like we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of unknowns. So someone had unknown purpose and I mean, if we say treated David Landau, we're basically, we're, we're basically replacing someone with Archie, right? Okay, it could be something like this. It could be David had some information that someone didn't want getting out. Maybe we need to talk to David first before we even come up with a theory. Because I don't feel like I don't feel like I can do anything here that isn't like completely shooting in the dark. Yeah, you know what? Let's go talk to David now, and then we'll try to we'll try to cook some stuff up. Provided that the Landau's are around to see me, ah, uh, see whether David needs anything is a weird approach, but fine. I just I just want to know if he will talk to us about what he remembers. Um, let's make it a social call, right? Let's let's, let's wear our socializing outfit. Uh, fake but vibrant corsage, our lovely blue top, that'll do. I think this is good. I think this, this presents well. Oh, you look elegant. Uh, I don't want to flirt with David. Well, if we got, if we got David thinking we were, do we were like potentially into a thing, maybe we could get him to divulge things he wouldn't otherwise. The thing is, he's going to know that I'm pursuing Rachel because that's going to be happening right in front of him. So it feels like it feels like a difficult grift to pull off. Um, yeah, I recount the newspaper story. The southwest of London, London is largely destroyed. Oh, there are buildings that way, but they're not of English origin. I make the story as engaging as I can. Plenty of detail and a fair sprinkling of dramatic pauses. I was not myself on the night of the fall. I can barely recall where, uh, I can barely recall 
were the effects of the catastrophe and those of my body's betrayal. I can't make heads or tails of the grammar here. I can barely recall which, which were the effects of the catastrophe and those... Huh. I find I don't like to try. Yeah, well, it's, uh, <laughs> the whole sentiment's very confusing. Am I am I being silly? This is like a this sentence is a nightmare, right? I don't know. All right. Um. David was wealthy. Hold on. It's been such a long time since we talked to David. What do we know about David? This, by the way, is fantastic. I was looking at this before starting the recording. Like, it keeps all of the information you've ever learned about people. It keeps, like, your current sort of relationships with them in a very simple sort of description. Delicious companion and detractor. Um, I decided I was going to fuck Mr. Pages. That hasn't come to, come to fruition yet. All right, so what do we know? I introduced myself to David, persuaded him to obey me on behalf of the ministry. We did the census. Loved Charlotte before she became Lady Carringham. Okay, so we don't have a good sense, really, of what his life was like prior to the fall, but they had this house. So I'm assuming that he was he was doing just fine by the old ways, and maybe it's not a good idea in this moment to express relief that the old ways are gone. Um, let's move lightly to new topics. Try to Try to turn the... Try to make this a little bit more of a positive experience for him. We want him to like us enough that he's willing to talk, right? I laugh, but let the subject drop. It strikes me that I know very little of your own family. Um... Do we want to lie to him? We told... We told somebody a basically fake story, right? And I'm now struggling to remember who that was. My biggest concern is that running around telling a bunch of different stories about our elevation could come back to bite us in the end. Um, especially if people talk. I'm going to boast of the fine people I helped dress. Again, just sort of like riding on the idea that he was probably more or less uh, okay with the order of things before. I speak of my family's background and the fine people we had the honor to dress. I talk about keeping to fine old standards and traditions, about making clothes so enduring and tasteful they might be worn for decades. <sighs> that sounds good, doesn't it? David studies me for a long minute and nods. He got very serious there. I meant to ask you whether there's anything I can help you with. I don't suppose you could come between Milton and my sister. I convince her that there are superior options elsewhere. I actually am very much engaged in that pursuit at the moment. Or that she'd be happier alone. I won't suggest speaking to him about it. That would be a lost cause. Yeah, you know, I'm 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 in. I'm <laughs> I'm working on it. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, my friend. There's a brief lull in the conversation. What's your view on memories? Is there anything you'd choose to forget if you could? I have the sense that some question here is bothering him. Uh... Hmm. I am going to argue that all memories have value. I think our character is, our character is like always acting with, um, acting with an intent, right? We always have sort of <laughs> malice aforethought and so I'm not I'm not given to answer these questions in a way that feels truthful so much as in a way that motivates the kind of responses that we want to get and I definitely want him to hold on to his memories and maybe to relate each one of them to me in order slowly well all our memories have value mm, I wonder some of them might put us on the wrong track even after we've stopped speaking, he looks thoughtful, and the conversation falls silent for a moment. Finally, he shakes off these reflections. 
Uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of questions that I have here. I don't really want to ask about the experience of dying. I want to ask what he remembers in the time prior to the death. But I guess this might be the only way into that subject. I, I must ask. The same things everyone wants to ask. What was it like to die? That's the part I can't speak about to Rachel or to anyone. Fortunately, it isn't what interests my visitors either. They want to talk about what comes afterward. The boat ride, the far shore, the great pale ice moths in the air. But it's the suffering when I was still alive. That's what I can't get out of my head, even if I try not to think about it. Um... I, like, I hate this. I hate these options because what I want to do is pry on the suffering. Like, I want anything he remembers, even just, like, symptoms of what was going on with him, because that could help to prove or disprove a poisoning or, you know, suggest what poison we're talking about. Or there's all this valuable information that not only should we be able to ask for, but it should be almost almost impossible not to ask for it, right? This should be the main thing on our character's mind. And I am finding it a little bit frustrating that we have no way to ask him the most obviously important questions. Even if he would just shut us down, we should still be able to ask. I am going to pry for more on the ice moths, though. Like, what, what did you see, though? What does that mean? I saw them flutter past me to the far shore, and it seemed as though their wings were made of frost. It's not a pleasant thing, dying. My head ached and my lungs were burning. I felt like there was a ball of fire in my gut. And then my body began to purge itself. I'll spare you the details. I think it must have been Phoebe who had to clean the place afterward. It's another indignity that I did to her. Made her face such a thing, I mean. It's a terrible sensation when you realize that your body is destroying itself, that it's being damaged beyond repair, that you're going to die, but that you're nowhere near dead yet. Yeah. Lose myself thinking about protective schemes. Honestly, I don't think that that's... This character is not really... Self-preservation instincts probably a little bit lower in any non-social situation than we might like. And yet you're here. Hmm. I think something is still a little wrong. I think I didn't come back entirely undamaged. Sometimes, if I breathe too deep, I catch a pain. The worst thing is remembering death. Oh, I wish I could forget just that. Just forget what it was like. I don't suppose that's one of the miracles of the Neath. The ability to put a memory in a safe and sink it to the bottom of the Z. So yeah, like deeply traumatic memories. This is why I, like, I specified that our character is answering this question in a way that's designed to provoke a particular response. Because I don't know that we do believe that all memories have value. Uh, memories of like horrible trauma and stuff... I think it probably is a good thing to be able to put those away, if if you can find a way to do it. If anyone does know something like that, it will be Archie or perhaps Milton, not the people David would choose as confidants. Why would I think Archie would know something like that? Well, if I do hear of any way, I'll let you know. Thank you. Don't worry, I don't expect you to be able to. But if you did, I would be grateful. Okay, help David forget death. You know, it does seem like a merciful thing to do. We should bring this visit to a close. Everything is always running too slowly, and yet every day is the same. Huh. I have only platonic intentions toward... I mean, David and I should be friends, though, right? I'm trying to be friendly with everybody. I, it's fine. It's fine to be friendly with everybody. He smiled at the end there. At this point, I go back to Horatia's, and you know what we're going to do. We're going to just change. I don't want to go back looking all fancy. That's not the real me. That's the armor. Huh. 
Ah, friend. There's a newcomer to the house. Try not to assume the worst. You look solemn, Horatia. The last time was when you told us the supply of cheese had run out. I know we've had a happy little group here, but the time had come. I've taken in a new lodger. I am doing my best to get Archie sent home. You haven't yet, and we don't know how long it will take. No, but I don't think it's time to give up and move on. I kind of want to take Horatia's side here. Like, we have, there are rooms, right? I don't... I think, for me, some of the question here for this character, for Winnie, some of the question here is going to come down to, like, one of loyalty. If we're talking about just a room that was empty being filled, then I want to back Horatia. If we're talking about somebody being given Archie's room, like he won't have a place to stay when we, when we get him out, that I would have a little bit more trouble with. But I guess for right now, I'm just going to stay on Horatia's side. If you trust this person, I'm sure they'll be welcome here. Well, it's early days for liking, but I think he'll be more use than not. You should also know he's a... A clay man, he calls it. Looks like a statue, but he's polite. And clothed before you get any notions. Hold on, what notions did she think I was... Um... Yeah, we crack a joke. Well, his board won't come to much then, I suppose. I understand he doesn't eat, no. But he does pay rent. Even if he's the most well-behaved statue you've ever met, it's a risk. It will draw attention, and I don't see the need. Everything we do reflects on Archie now. Well, I need someone who can do for me outside the house. Or hadn't you noticed that I can't go outside anymore? I... Oh, that is... I know you don't go out much. I suppose the last time I saw you go out was to the graveyard. And I don't anymore. I do not step through our front door. But the trade is, I can promise you our new lodger won't do anything I don't know about. Forgive my clumsy interpolation into your domestic idol. I wish to make myself known to you. I am... He makes a noise like rain running down limest limestone. I believe the best translation is moss. I hope to learn more about this new city. It is very different from my native Polythreme. What is Polythreme like, Mr. Moss? It is an island far across the sea. Everything has a voice there. My king, he of a hundred hearts, reigns over us all. It is often harmonious. There is very little screaming. That's... <laughs> yep. Silence isn't the same as peace. But I'll take your word on it for the moment. I hope you'll find rest here. If rest is indeed all Mr. Moss is looking for... Okay, come on. I don't know what Grizz thinks the problem here is going to be. Like, in what sense does this draw attention? Is she worried? Like, I, I always wonder with her, right? Does she know something we don't about the way, like, the ministry is going to feel about any given situation? Are we not to take in Clayman? Is Mr. Page going to be upset? Uh, well, I will try to, uh, Try to defuse the situation a little bit in my customary way, I suppose. Uh, will you be wanting the slate off the roof for your lunches? Okay, that's... I don't know if that's a good joke. It feels, it feels borderline offensive. No, indeed. Shale is a most dissatisfying delicacy. In truth, I have no need to eat, although I am happy to watch all of you do so. What motivates a clay man to reside in a boarding house in the first instance? I assume you neither eat nor sleep. The accommodations would seem to be of little value to you. 
Griselda. No, it is an honest question. This seems a happy place. He makes a sound like water flowing through the spout of a gargoyle. Oh, I was not made for deceit. The king did not fashion these lips for lies. I sought a man in the previous city. I did not find him. I believe he was at odds with the Khans. The who? I have heard they call themselves masters now. They style themselves after their latest acquisition. But the man is gone, and everything has changed. I hope to find my place and my purpose once more. Yeah, of course. Well, perhaps we should let Mr. Moss settle in before we bombard him with questions. Quite right. I'm glad someone retains a sense of manners. In polythreme, we are always in union. A polyphony... Uh, you know, this is a word I've read many times, but I don't think I've ever heard anybody say, and I don't know if it's polyphony or polyphony. Uh, any in any case, makes a pleasant change. Hold on, I'm tabbing out. I'm going to go look. Where does the stress fall in this word? Poly, polyphony. Here we go. Polyphony, okay. <clears throat> a polyphony makes a pleasant change. I was looking for someone in the last city. Yours falling came as a surprise. There, you see? Mr. Moss requires his rest. I don't know, that seems like a non sequitur. It almost seems like that, that line is out of place, because it's information we already had, and it doesn't connect to the line before it or the line after it. I have no wish to be a burden. In polythreme, what the king wishes to occur, occurs. But there are three of you. I will wait for you to reach an accord. I require respite rather than shelter. It will not be an undue inconvenience if I am better to look elsewhere. And he is meant to keep us safe, is he? If I were a housebreaker, I'd give him a wide berth. Besides... Hargett said he considered it his obligation to help Mr. Moss find a home. And that it was a good deed to place him here. If Hargett thinks the deed makes up for arresting Archie, I have some questions about the moral accounting. Not everyone tallies their good and bad deeds in a double-entry ledger book, Lady Griselda. Whatever the Ministry may have told you. But he's right. If we're all to rub along here, all, you all need to be comfortable with our new lodger. You live here just as much as I do. I think you're likely to be out of voted, Horatia. No one has a better heart than you. But we must think of Archie. We court suspicion and perhaps the master's anger. If I... If Archie were here, I'd say different. Well, no, I mean, it's weird that Griselda thinks that I'm going to vote against, given given that all of my speech so far has been in favor of Moss staying, but obviously. I think we have room for one more. Ah, I shall go and tell Mr. Moss the good news. Then let him know he has you to thank. On your heads be it if this goes awry. But I'll do what I can to smooth things over if the Ministry involves itself. I think it's kind of interesting that we didn't, um, we didn't make any attempt to convince Grizz that it's going to be fine. We just outvoted her. A shape coalesces in the attic. Or, more accurately, looms. I am sorry if I startled you. I hoped we might become better acquainted. And I have several questions regarding my tenancy here. I would have asked the others, but Mrs. Chapman was dozing, and Miss Smith told me she was engaged in important business. I did not realize business constituted the imbibing of wine. Well, listen, there's a lot of kinds of business. I have much to learn. Do let me know when I make an error of etiquette. 
I am sure there shall be many. Okay, well, you know, um, this, <laughs> this would be a turnaround, huh? Catch him off guard. Well, I live for surprise guests. Oh, dear. I hope you are not regularly interrupted. I am always available if required. I've noticed Londoners are averse to poor behavior when I am present. I cannot think why. I am afraid I did have a question. In Polythreme, our king rang a hollow bronze chime to summon us when required. His favored servants all bear his own image, so both our station and our duties are clear to all. I am afraid I find the etiquette here more confusing. I hoped you could explain my duties, as a lodger in Miss Chapman's guesthouse. Well... I mean, Miss Chapman, Mrs. Chapman does not leave the house. If you can service her messenger outside, that would assist her. I had noted her affinity with the building. It is a relationship I have not observed in Polythreme. But, all the same, more like home than most things in Londinium. This seems in line with my expectations. I had one last question, forgive me. But I wondered your thoughts on my behavior thus far. I had hoped to be well-liked here, if you could advise me. Well, I haven't really observed any of your... Be We've known each other for like three minutes, guy. Uh, do I want him to just do what everyone else is doing? I worry that this advice, misinterpreted or poorly understood, could get him in just as, like, as much trouble as anything else he might do. I don't want to laugh at him, though, and I don't want to tell him to buzz off, so I guess we're picking this one by default. Everyone is just muddling along. There is not much muddling where I am from. It is a state of being for boots and urns. But I shall see what I can do. Thank you. I shall leave you to your rest. Good night, as they seem to say here. A phrasing that confuses me. It is always night here. Yeah, I guess so. All right, I feel like we can go to sleep. This is a remarkably eventful day, considering that we only... Uh, well, I mean, it was a remarkably uh, eventful afternoon following a remarkably eventful morning. I'm the first to the morning paper. The headlines today read... Inventor proposes building a balloon to visit whatever is above. I don't feel like that's proposes. That doesn't feel like a whole news story. <laughs> that feels very thin. All right, let's see about other memories of the time before the fall. Uh, is this going to be the same? Because we had that one memory that repeated... But it was gone after the second time we remembered it um, in the last season, right? Okay, no, this is this is a, an extension of that idea. Where do I submit my orders for supper? Which orders would those be, love? Concerning what I would like to eat? So that the housekeeper can prepare it. This isn't Claridge's child. If you care to dine in, you'll have the same meal as the rest of the lodgers. And it'll be what I fancy cooking that day. Oh, in that case, I'm content to leave the matter in your hands. My mother always did say that it wasn't ladylike to leave the poor housekeeper with the responsibility of choosing a menu. So I thought, but I imagine on reflection that's for when one has guests... Okay, so when she first came here, she really had no idea what the world outside of, like, high society was like. Her, she had a very, very sheltered upbringing, it seems. All right, well, we can do one more day here. If I head down to the Landau's townhouse, all I can really do is build my friendship with David. I mean... I'm having a remarkably hard time figuring out 
what it is that happened. I'm having a remarkably hard time even asking people what it is that happened. And I do want to keep working for Horatia and God, there's so much, there's so much that needs doing. Um, we could take the census. We could get more census papers is not a bad idea. Probably. This will give us some information about our, our new pal here too. Let's, let's talk to Moss for a little bit. Um, as he is a lodger, he's going to see me dressed this way. In any case, I'm just gonna, I'm satisfied with this. Also, Moss is not one to stand on ceremony. He wouldn't even understand if a ceremony were being stood at him. Good you, Winnie. I trust you're keeping fed. Um, yeah, let's talk about the morning news with him. I recount the newspaper story. An, ambit an ambitious inventor building on the ideas of Montgolfier has proposed a balloon trip to scout out whatever is above London. Oh? Mr. Fires is said to have forbidden the development. As usual, I make a black joke of it. I am charmed by how fascinated Londoners are by their surroundings. I wonder what will happen when you take to the Z and see all that lies over the waves. Uh, this is a case for scholars and scientists if there ever was one. The sooner we can get to understanding how things work down here, the better off we'll be. Moss hears me out, but it's plain this question doesn't matter as much to them as to me. Oh, don't mind me. It has come to my attention that your interest in me may be of a romantic or indeed sexual nature. Uh, yo. <laughs> Hold on, you may be jumping to conclusions there, friend. He makes a sound like a rock falling into a well. It occurs to me that it would be good to discuss the subject head-on, including our personal and anatomical compatibilities. I am sorry. From your expression, I fear I have misread the situation. Yeah, just a little bit. Or perhaps you wish to reveal some personal anatomical detail that would render my concerns null. Um... I mean... He is mistaken about my interest, but also... I have to know, right? What do you mean about compatibility? Well, only that I believe the union you are accustomed to presents difficulties for us both. We were made in the image of our king, but lack both knowledge and desire. A conjunction which seems vital to any possibility of the two of us conjuncting. He makes a noise like the gurgling of stones in a waterfall. Like our nostrils, I do not think the thought of such matters. I am unsure what would happen were we to progress. But, more pertinently, I am made of stone and you are made of meat. Death is not permanent here. Injury, however, I cannot bear to hurt you. But that does not mean you cannot give me joy. Oh, so he's like a pillow princess. <laughs> Was in. You have the wrong idea. I was kind of curious about whether you have a dick or not, but you have, you have the wrong idea. Oh. Ah, forgive me. I have much to learn of your customs still. Your indifference reminded me of my king and his lover. He makes a noise like the slow crumbling of an ancient bridge to the vicissitudes of time. Allow me to excuse myself. I understand that this is done in such situations. Please do visit me again soon. I shall put all thought of this from my mind. Okay. So somebody taught him to just bail on a situation where someone has become uncomfortable, which I guess is a pretty British thing to do. It did prevent me from getting done the thing I was trying to get done. And I do not have the option of, of talking to him again. So... We have so many things to do. It seems like to question David about what happened, I'm going to have to go to him with a story. So let's maybe try to, um, let's maybe try to come up with something. So, so 
So uh, someone had unknown purpose. They bought some rare ingredients. And with David, they... I mean, it could just be they wanted to kill rich people. I get that. I can see where that comes from. But... Oh, it's, I suppose it could have been an accident. I don't know. He sounded like... From what he said, I wonder if it was not one of these Neath things where, like, I don't know, he had burning sigils inscribed on his bones or whatever. And I don't think that's the kind of thing that happens by accident for the most part. I think it's about something David did. That would be my guess. That David did provoke in some way here. So David... Uh, I don't know. David had unspecified desires. David fought with them over Rachel. I mean, it could be Milton, right? Yeah, okay, maybe, 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 maybe. We can just plug Milton in here. So they fought over Rachel... David made false promises, deceiving and betraying Milton. That seems like a weird, a weird um, interpretation of the stuff we put in here. Yeah, maybe Milton somehow messed with Archie's medicine bag or... My guess is that Archie is a fall guy here, right? Milton could have come up with some kind of plan where it would seem like a poisoning, especially to people who are not familiar with the Neath. He knows that he has a massive information advantage, right? And he's trying to get David out of the way so that he can pursue Rachel in whatever way. Yeah, something like that could make sense. David underwent health treatments and Milton passionately resented this this display of hypochondria. That's really not. Okay, it's something like this. Ah, uh, David. David thought the murder would leave an easier approach to Rachel. David could do nothing else and he fucking died. Yeah, David doesn't make sense as the motivator if this is our plan. But, like, how do we... If this is the if this is the thought... Hold on. If this is the thought, Milton makes more sense as the motivator. I don't... The idea that there was a, a third person involved kind of throws my... Um, my burgeoning theory here out the window... The, the fact that there has to be a motivator. All right, hold on. I want, I want to correct some things, but Phoebe, like, maybe Milton managed to get Phoebe to poison David in some way. Uh, so Phoebe did not think as humans do. Uh, Phoebe helped for wealth, right? She's, she's working on behalf of Milton because Milton has things to offer. Maybe not physical wealth, but, you know, power, etc. So, bought rare, bought rare ingredients makes sense. I think that's fine. Hopes to end humiliation. She wants out of her, like, lesser status, right? And then Milton just lied about it. Milton motive. I mean, he wanted the murder to succeed. Milton thought the murder would leave an easier approach to Rachel. And he lied about everything to everybody. This is at least like an idea that makes sense. We still don't really know. It could be a tainted drug. It could be, it could be in the cloth as well. Okay, here we go. This is a story that we can ask people about.
so yeah, now that we now that we have a theory, we can do some we can do some some pursuit. I really like this as a mechanic. I think conceptually this is a very smart way to do an investigation. Um so who do we want to approach about it first? I guess I'm going to go straight to Phoebe. Let's see if we can get a feel for, um, get a feel for this. And I want to come to Phoebe not seeming like a member of the upper class, but seeming like, seem, seeming like somebody who is of her class, right? So maybe we just wear a tailor's apron and... If I wear the fork, if she really did work on behalf of Milton, maybe this will put her at ease. Maybe this will make her think that I'm on their side. I don't know. This is kind of a weird outfit, but this is what we're going with. Phoebe may find this look familiar and comforting. Maybe. Could. Could be. <laughs> Are you here to see me, then? I don't receive visitors, as a rule. And if I did, they'd be meant to visit in the kitchen, I think. We'd better go for a walk if you want to talk with me. Yeah, fair enough. She took me to the graveyard. And I started coming out here for walks while Mr. Landau was dead. And Rachel said there was no point visiting the grave, but I liked it. Hmm. Made me feel like I could talk to him. I don't want to openly accuse her. Let's... Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the murder? There are some things I don't understand. Well, I don't think they'd want me to. Uh, David and Rachel, I mean. Is David answering your questions? Not yet. But I was hoping you would. Only, only one option here. It's for the sake of the law. I see. Maharjit did ask me to. Uh, oh, did he? I can answer your questions then, if David's allowing it. Let's start by talking about Milton. Again, I wanna I wanna lead into anything that could be taken as an accusation. Would Milton have had a reason to kill David? Not a reason that would have mattered to any civilized person. But the two of them didn't care for one another. Milton was always hanging around Rachel, prying into people's business. And I'd not put it beyond him to kill David out of malice. No one speaks for a moment. I have not forgiven Ma Rachel for going to dig David up without me. And if she'd given me the word, I'd have been there with a, with a shovel. Huh. Yeah, it does... It does make me wonder if perhaps Phoebe, the way she talks about getting to talk to David, that could be vengefulness, right? That could be, ha, I, I pulled one over you, uh, over on you in the end, I win, take that. But it could also be that she was like romantically interested in him, which would complicate this whole thing. Maybe. If we are to take her at her word, if we are to take her words at face value, it feels like she has feelings for him. Well, Rachel was deeply afraid. Her dreams disturbed her. She didn't want to frighten you, too. If you won't share your troubles with someone, you don't think much of them, do you? And you should do people the credit of being able to carry their part. It's not such a lot to ask, is it? To want to be there when the head of my household, my employer, comes back to the land of the living? Or at the very least, to be woken up when they bring him home? Okay, there's definitely some resentment going on there. So, what did happen? I didn't come to know of David Landau's recovery from death till I went to serve Miss Landau breakfast. And there he was, sitting on the edge of her bed like a wandering ghost. And if I'd fainted dead away, it would have been no less than they deserved. 
Hmm. Phoebe came to live with the Landau some years ago. More than five, I would guess, but fewer than ten. She has become, in that time, a precise farmer's almanac regarding all of her employer's habits and predilections. She's able to say which meals Rachel Landau is likely to order when she has just fallen in love, which books David Landau reads when distressed, and which belong to a cheery state of mind. She lays tit tidbits of this information before me, selected primarily on how peculiar, alien, and ridiculous Phoebe considers a trait to be. But these affectionate mundanities are the substance of her life. Oh, there's laundry waiting, and the bats won't do it. Yeah, um... I'm in no hurry to change my relationship with Phoebe. I shake my head to clear it. The ruminations are gone. All is as it was. Okay, well, that didn't reveal anything directly, but it did... It did make me think that Phoebe is maybe less likely to have uh, been an eager participant in David's death. It's still not clear to me whether Moss is in David's room or not, or um, is in Archie's room or not. I wish that was something that was clearer. I don't want them. He's trying to be kind. They are an abomination unto the Lord. And, more importantly, an, an abomination unto me. Can't you make her see sense? Our new lodger is making horrid dolls for reasons best known to himself. I think it's themself. Clay versions of us. Please make him stop doing it. Well, I... You know what, Grizz? Come on. Focus. Archie's in prison and the trial's in just a few days. The fate of the household hangs there. I know. I haven't been able to find a way around it. Well, I'm going to really emphasize this because it is important. Well, perhaps we could turn our attention to something other than our lodger's choice of handicraft. I am paying attention to other things. I've been through the topic again and again with Harjit and with Mr. Pages, asking around about whether any of the other masters have influence, searching through the ministry files until my eyes bleed, looking for any examples of past court cases thrown out or overturned. I even tried going back to the house, my parents' house, I mean, to see if I could beg an introduction to a barrister they used to know. Not that that was any use. The house was empty, and when I looked up the barrister, he was dead. Most of the barristers are dead. Lincoln's Inn fared very badly in the fall. And I come home from all that to find my fellow lodger, Archie's replacement, is to all appearances putting my soul into a figurine. On the surface, that might have been funny. Down here, can you be sure it's not a threat? Uh, no, okay, that's... I'm sorry, I, I could have put that better. A fault confessed is half redressed. Watch where you put your feet. You never know when someone's little clay head will catch you out. Okay, things are tense. <laughs> Let's just get some sleep. I do feel bad. I shouldn't... The fact that she was willing to endure the, you know, abasement of going back home, even though it wasn't, in the end, for anything, is actually really impressive. That's... She's trying perhaps harder than I am here. As usual, I resort to the morning papers. The headlines today read... Come see Tristram Bagley's newest opera. Witness the rise of a prodigy. Tristram Bagley. That's a new name for us, right? I think so. Ugh. All right. Well, I think that's where we're going to call it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. I don't know exactly when the trial is, but I am definitely very worried. I feel like we've made remarkably little progress. Yeah, I don't know. We might have to start, like, throwing direct accusations around a little bit more aggressively. I just, 
I need to learn something. I need to feel like I know something. So come back next time and perhaps that's where we're going. And we'll see you then.